Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning in again. Today we are talking about the MoGraph selection tool. Um, I find that the MoGraph selection tool is a very underutilized tool uh, that I find a lot of people either don't know about it or don't think to use it a lot. Uh, because of that, I think that it's something that I'd like to talk about today. Uh, essentially what it does is it takes your MoGraph effectors and it turns them on and off at different parts uh, of your cloned object. So what does that mean? So let's say that you wanted this front row of cats here to be larger. Okay, well, we could do that a few different ways. Um, obviously, we could go MoGraph uh, effector, and we'll put a plane effector on there. And let's turn off the position, make the scale higher, and let's just put it to one. Okay, so that makes everything larger. Let's turn our fall off to linear, and we will rotate and bring it to here. And then let's also take our object. Already, this is, <laughs> this is taking a while. But let's, let's just take our object and let's put it like this, okay? So this is one way to do it, all right? So we have we have our cats, uh, they're scaled up, and that works. Um, from there, we could apply more effectors and everything uh, and do what we need to do with it. Um, where I find that it runs into problems is if you wanna make a shape that's more interesting. So let's say that this is great, all you need is a line, fine. Uh, but what if you needed a shape that was more specific? You know, What if you needed to write a name or if you needed to make a squiggly line or something? Um, a good option to do that is with the MoGraph tool. So let's try to get the same effect, but using the MoGraph tool, MoGraph selection tool. Um, so I'm gonna delete this. And actually, I'm not gonna delete that. I'm going to just delete that. So we have our plane object, uh, which has a scale of one. Um, so everything's being scaled up by one right now. Uh, now we want to get the front row of the cats to actually be larger. So let's go to under MoGraph and then MoGraph selection. You'll see that we have these dots that appear, right? So there's all these dots and these dots are basically representational of the clone um, and each clone has its own dots. So the idea is basically you go in and you select what you want to be affected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my brush tool here. I'm going to select just one of those dots. Okay. As soon as I select that dot, you'll see that it create a MoGraph selection tag. Okay. If you're familiar with uh, selection tags in general, um, it works the same way. So if I have it selected and then I hold shift, I'm now turning those other dots yellow, which means that they're selected. So for this, let's let's make like an X or something. And then we are going to next, uh, we need to apply it. So let's take our plane effector. And if you go to effector selection, you can then drag your selection tag under there. And you'll see that now it's only affecting the clones that have uh, have been selected. So that's pretty awesome because now I can come in here, as long as I have this selected, I can just essentially just paint, uh, or you have to have this and this selected. I can essentially just paint what I want to be in there, which is pretty cool. But for now, let's let's leave the X because I think it's, uh, it's simple to see. So that's great. Um, underneath the tag, you have a couple options. You have clear, which will just get rid of everything. Invert, we'll invert it. So now I've just got that X. Um, subtracted and then I'm going to put that back to how it was um, and then we can display uh, each cloner number so each 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 cloner is assigned a number so I guess maybe in some situations this might help uh, just to know if this is a cloner 10 this is 15 20 25 um, I don't find myself using it that often Okay, and then we have uh, another feature here, which is use fields. And this is a new feature, which I had in R20, I believe. 
Um, so if we enable this, you're going to see a couple things are going to happen. So let's go ahead and enable it. Instantly, we get uh, the fields uh, tab bar down here. Um, and it puts a freeze object on there. Now, what that freeze object is doing is it's, it's basically saying, okay, the changes that have been made already, this the shape that's been created with the, with the selection tag, don't mess with it. Just freeze it. It's going to stay the same. Um, everything else will get affected. So this is pretty cool because now you can leave, you can have a, a selection that's set, but on top of that, you could do something where you have let's say a formula field. And now the formula field is essentially going to be selecting for you. So as this formula field runs through, it's selecting your different objects um, and applying the plane effector to it. While it's still not affecting the X that we actually have in the middle. Um, let me show you one that might be a little bit more obvious. So if we take the linear field, now it's it's essentially selecting everything uh, as it moves through it, and it's applying our effector that we have linked to it, except for the x's. You know the x's are always going to stay the same. Now if we turn off freeze, you're going to see it affects everything. So that kind of defeats the purpose then. Um, so that's cool. Uh, another possibility, and then you know the possibilities are endless from here. I mean you could come in here and then you could. Go to your cloner and you can go mm, add the effector and then uh, we'll just do a formula just because it's it makes sense. Um, same thing. You you can just apply that to the uh, to your selection and you'll notice that it it automatically applied it to the uh, to the selection tag because uh, I believe I actually had this selected. If you have this selected and then you apply an effector, it just automatically We'll pipe it in for you. I mean, let's just test it to see. So MoGraph, Effector, and then let's just do a Shader Effector. Yeah, see, it doesn't do it. But then if I come over here and I select this and I go MoGraph, Effector, Shader Effector, then it's in there automatically. Um, so that's it. It's uh, I find it to be a pretty cool tool that most people don't think to use or just don't know much about. Um, I think there's a lot of possibilities. and. I found myself, for the most part, using it to fix mistakes. Uh, so sometimes there might be a certain object that I don't want to be affected, and rather than messing with a bunch of, uh, you know, fall off objects and boxes and spheres and all that stuff, uh, it's almost easier to just say, "Hey, turn this one off. We're done." Um, so cool. That's it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one.